Uh, hi, can we go to the room? لا هلا انا انت احنا في الـ في الـ احنا في المين روم بس الشباب عندهم فرصه انهم يكملوا البرزنتيشن عشان انا كنت معهم بس ما رجعت على الروم نفسها ما ما هو بطل في رومز ناهد يعني اللي عنده يعني بيشتغل فيه حاليا اوكي خلص ماشي الحال لانه لانه كنا بنكمل بنقطه ففكرت انه راح نكملها مع بعض شكرا كثير واو اللي يهمك خلص زياد بكملها عندنا ناهد اوكي اوكي دكتور انا فكرت انه راح يرجع يدخلنا ثاني مره لانه هيك فكرت انه راح يصير انه بعد ما نطلع راح نرجع ندخل
Uh, it is uh, 15 past 11. <laughs> well, <laughs> arriving on time. Uh, and I think uh, we can um, uh, start again. Hello, everybody. Everyone is back with us in the main room. Mafrood, ah. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't leave. We wanted a sign. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, welcome again in uh, our last uh, day of this important training. Uh, we're happy to have you. Um, uh, I know some of you uh, were uh, working since the early morning today to um, uh, finalize their presentations. Um, today will be, uh, you will be presenting your works and um, uh, we are having uh, uh, with, with us Ascanio, Sarah, and uh, Eugene. And uh, Eugene will, uh, uh, will take over to moderate this uh, uh, session uh, starting from now uh, in the practical presentations. Thank you all for, all for your effort. And we are really looking forward to your presentations and for the uh, forthcoming discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody, and it's really nice to see you all again, although, you know, names only, but still, <laughs> at least on screen. Um, I just wanted to congratulate you for going through this uh, very, very hardworking three weeks. Uh, I, I confess I sneaked um, previews of your work through the Facebook Live over the past two couple of weeks that I wasn't present in the Zoom room, but uh, thankfully, you know, technology allows us to uh, eavesdrop <laughs> unknowingly um, through the discussions. And I just have to say that I was really impressed with the level of engagement and your motivation to be um, completely immersed in this uh, line of work. And uh, I sincerely hope that uh, the past three weeks have been very useful for you, although maybe slightly painful in terms of the amount of workload. Um, but uh, I, I promise it will pay off in the future for your ongoing works. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, probably give you a little bit of housekeeping keep, keeping, um, notes. Uh, I will moderate uh, more or less the session of the presentations and uh, I'll give each group 20 minutes to present their results. If you go over the 20 minute limit, I'll start chasing you so that you can quickly wrap up. Um, this is so that we can actually enable some uh, question and answer session immediately following the presentation for clarifications. And uh, also uh, at the end of the two presentations, we'll also ask some res the resource people to uh, come back with uh, general comments overall about the two presentations. Um, hopefully we'll also have some time left to just have overarching general discussions, not necessarily uh, limited to the content of the presentation itself, but just on overall theme of impact assessment, management, heritage, uh, whatever it is, um, just to close off this uh, great work three weeks. Um, I just wanted to highlight that I used to be a national focal point and I was utterly frustrated when I didn't know what to do about upcoming developments and uh, when there was absolutely no information available for me to look at or take note of in order for me to do this proactively and respond uh, in a good way. So I, I just really hope that this overall journey has, has been useful for you and will be useful for you in the future. And without further ado, I will then open up the floor for the presentations and uh, because we have only two groups, I don't really see the point of being too innovative. So I'll just go with the numerical order and I'll ask group one um, to be uh, presenting their case study. And uh, actually, I don't know if it's going to be one person presenting or lots of people presenting, one person from the group. Um, okay, and I can see that Ziad has his camera on. So I'm presuming that he'll be the one presenting from group one. <laughs> Feel free to share the screen and uh, off we go. Thank you very much, Eugene. Good morning, everybody. So uh, I will be talking about preparing HIA for Manger Square Village project at birthplace of Jesus, Church of Nativity and Pilgrimage Route. 
This project was proposed by Bethlehem Development Foundation, BDF, and I will be to, uh, speaking on behalf of group uh, number one. This is the table of contents, description of the World Heritage Property, proposed project and alternative, alternatives, methodological approach and aims, stakeholders analysis, values and attributes, assessment, management system analysis, preliminary impact and identification, potential mitigation and comments. First of all, as you can see, uh, we are talking about the site located in, in Palestine, south of Jerusalem, 10 kilometers. Um, uh, the site identified by Christian tradition as the birthplace of Jesus since the second uh, century. A church was the first completed there in uh, AD 339, and the evidence that replaced it after fire in the sixth century retains elaborate flow mosaics from the original building. The site also includes Latin, Greek, Orthodox, Franciscan, and Armenian convents and churches, as well as bell towers, terrace gardens, and a pilgrimage route, as you can see here. This is the, uh, the site, uh, according to the World Heritage uh, List. This is the core zone, as you can see in the blue, uh, the Nativity Church, and the pilgrimage route, and also the buffer zone. And uh, here we can see uh, the main churches included in this uh, uh, site, as well as the bell towers, eastern terrace gardens, and the pilgrimage route here. Here is the garden. So, uh, also here you can see some of uh, the photos uh, for the Nativity Church and uh, the Manger Square here. Also, you can see the gardens and uh, ancient photos. Uh, here uh, we can see the proposed project. Actually, it's two projects, not only one, but it's related uh, uh, to the, let's say, uh, together. So we will be talking about uh, one of them, which called uh, the Manger Square Village, which is a multi-purpose parking and commercial real estate development. Um, uh, this was proposed by Bethlehem uh, Development Initiative Intervention to the Manager Square and its surroundings area um, requires traffic management. So it was uh, one of, uh, let's say, solution to the traffic management uh, here. And also endeavors to streamline traffic in the square uh, and surrounding streets and provide ample automated parking areas, a drop off zones, a commercial center with stores, caves, planted, shaded areas, and emergency center police. Uh, so this is the main components. And this is the, the initial design proposed uh, by BDF. Uh, uh, contained uh, ample automated parking areas, 305 cars. This is the first uh, proposal. Um, and uh, also uh, 16 and uh, 500 um, square meters, 16,000 of course, of combined built up areas. And uh, the, the developer was asked by Bethlehem municipality at that time and the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities to revise the design to host two main concerts. The first one, that any building shall not exceed the high of the uh, Nativity Church complex. And also the design shall consider the architectural profile of the area. And this is uh, the revised design, as you can see here. Uh, yes, the, the, the height reduced at that time. And uh, you can see that also the architectural profile. Maybe it's uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, what uh, what what needed, or let's say not uh, the best way. But at least there there is uh, some revision of this design happened at that time. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, in spite of uh, this revision of the design, we can see that uh, the World Heritage Committee decisions. Uh, uh, came like this. At the first, they uh, asked uh, for concept proposals in 2015. After that, 2016, uh, they requested further uh, to halt the works on the projects until we prepare heritage impact assessment. And 
uh, as you can see in 2018 here, uh, the Manager Square Tunnel project uh, postponed uh, and the Manager Square Village uh, cancelled at that time. But also, as uh, we can see that uh, also the mission uh, asked us also to cancel both projects because uh, the impact, but at that time, we didn't make, uh, let's say, uh, scientific uh, or let's say independent uh, heritage impact assessment at that time in order to see where the project is uh, uh, having a lot of negative or positive or something, some details. This is why we need uh, this uh, heritage impact assessment. The proposed project contains several components with the largest scale impacts, including digging, big construction, among other components next to the wall of the Nativity Church and the core zone of the World Heritage Property. Accordingly, we need to avoid any irreversible negative impacts on the World Heritage Property, or at least to suggest some, some mitigations, uh, mitigation measures using the ECOMOS guidance on heritage impact assessment 2000, and of course, getting benefit of this very important uh, workshop and this is uh, the main aims of uh, this impact assessment. We also started to make uh, the analysis for the stakeholders uh, and divided them into two parts, the primary and secondary stakeholders. As we can see here, the three donations of the chairs of nativity, the municipality uh, of Bethlehem, the uh, Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and CCHB and the Bethlehem Development Foundation are primary uh, the right holders, whereas we have secondary stakeholders, uh, religious community, visitors, and of course uh, we need another discussion to also uh, to involve more uh, of the stakeholders. And uh, here you can see the summary on the left hand of the values and also the, uh, the extracted attributes uh, from these values. And here you can see the map of uh, the attributes. This is not everything, of course, because uh, we still need to discuss more and also maybe to also focus on the other values because all of these attributes are extracted from, uh, let's say, the statement of outstanding universal value. So we need more discussion, actually. But uh, at this moment, we can see that uh, here we have the, the main uh, attributes, religious rituals, Damascus Gate here, Manger Square, well uh, Bell Towers, Armenian Convent, Greek Orthodox, the Grotto, Franciscan Convent, Eastern Terrace Gardens, and of course here the Grotto and the 4th century Basilica here, the mosaic you can see from this period, very important attribute. And here the well Bell Towers, uh, talking about the management system analysis, actually, uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, this uh, management system were uh, found in 2016 to 2017 during the preparation of the management and conservation plan. Uh, it, it, comp uh, it composed of the steering committee and the site management committee. They both cooperate in order to manage the World Heritage uh, property. And here you can see the partners of the steering committee and the site management committee. committee. Uh, we can see that this management system is still under monitoring until this day because uh, we need to revise it maybe next year or after two years. But in general, we can see that this management uh, is working good. Um, uh, at least, as we can see in this case, the project, wh what happened, there, there was a good cooperation between BDF and Bethlehem Municipality, Minister of Tourism and Activities. So this is why uh, the project were discussed uh, among these committees and, and finally uh, succeeded to remove the, the property from the danger list. This is my point of view, but I, th I think, yes, we need to discuss more and to make rev revision of of the system itself, but it's working. And uh, here we made some uh, um, summary for the main activities of the projects. Uh, it included digging of the, for the foundation, tourism pressure, development pressure, environmental pressure, traffic pressure, gas emission, 
And here we have uh, the main uh, attributes, the nativity, the grotto, eastern terrace, gardens, fourth century, basilica, etc. So uh, we try to use this scale uh, from the ECOMOS guidance 2011 order uh, to, to make some uh, evaluation or let's say to measure the severity uh, of the project on these uh, attributes. Uh, so we, to, we took, uh, for example, here uh, the nativity and we found that there is high negative on uh, this attribute but at the same time we have some positive of course so low positive and high negative uh, whereas the situation in the manager square we can see high positive because because uh, this will impact in the future uh, the circulation of visitors and uh, uh, will include more safety of uh, them and uh, this could also help uh, for the organization of the traffic in the future in some uh, way. But also we can see that there is very high negative on the Armenian convent because it's very close to the project and uh, the project will impact it very uh, high negative. So uh, we, we made this uh, table including the uh, high and positive negatives on each uh, each physical attribute. Uh, most of uh, the attributes here are outstanding universal value from the outstanding universal values, whereas I think we need uh, additional work on the other values in order to, uh, to select them and also to make this evaluation. But here we have uh, only one high negative other value, which is the uh, destruction, destruction of uh, some shops, uh, which included in this project and is uh, considered uh, high negative. But for the oil outstanding universal value, we can see that we have four high negatives, one very high negative, three moderate, so, and also we have one high positive. Uh, potential mitigation, um we discussed some uh, some uh, some things for this mitigation first of one minimize the scale of the project and uh, also modify the design style from modern with wide openings into traditional style uh, adopt light digging method in line with the seismic study prepared by the Bethlehem uh, development foundation also make additional reduction of the heights where possible for this project. Uh, finally, decrease the number of shops. In conclusion, we can see that uh, the project has a highly negative impact on the outstanding universal value uh, of the site as well as the other identified values. The project will also cause the partial or total destruction of potentially valuable physical attributes such as the removal of shops and harming archaeological remains. It will also disrupt many associated values related to religious, religious spiritual aspects. But on the other hand, we can see that it has some positive aspects regarding the decrease of traffic in the manger square, which will also protect the visitors and increase the safety measures. Accordingly, we think that the project should be cancelled or modified in line with the mitigations proposed uh, in the previous slide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Group 1. I didn't even have to chase you to finish early. <laughs> <laughs> You are within 15 minutes. Excellent. Um, so before we actually move on to Group 2, uh, for the moment, I was wondering if we could actually just um, have a quick Q&A session just to ask some clarifications or, or further explanations that you might have for Group 1 on their presentation. Can I just turn yes. to the group to see if you have any burning questions that you would like to raise? Uh, Eugene, I have one, but I, but I can't raise my hand. <laughs> ah, sure, go ahead, <laughs> Mohamed. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, um, uh, thank you, uh, Ziad and uh, Group One, for this interesting presentation. Um, I just uh, would like to uh, stop at the last sentence uh, mentioned or said by uh, Ziad concerning the reduction of traffic uh, on the Manger Square. 
uh, uh, knowing that uh, this, the um, project was planned to host 300 cars. Um, and in the presentation provided by Ahmed and Basma in the very beginning, they were, uh, there was the, this main question, how these 300 cars will be approaching the site, how they will come into that area. Uh, and uh, I think the answer was linked to, uh, to the tunnel um, that was planned in that, uh, in that specific position. Uh, so evaluating uh, the development project apart from the tunnel probably would, uh, would give you this positive answer concerning the reduction of traffic. But otherwise, it will be a problem. If we cannot build the traffic and keep the other uh, build the tunnel and keep the other project, it would be difficult to, uh, to reduce the traffic um, congestion in that area. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. This was a That's comment, it wasn't more than a question. I don't know if you would like to comment. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'd turn to group one if you have any additional comments on that. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Do I hear somebody wanting to speak? Yes. Yeah. Can, can, can I speak? Sure. Ahmed, Thank yes. you, Eugene. Thank Let's you very much. Uh, actually, I agree with uh, Mohammed's uh, comment on, uh, on this uh, on this issue. Uh, uh, indeed, when we speak about uh, the commercial village, okay, it's uh, essentially connected connected with the, the tunnel itself. If uh, if there is no tunnel, you know, uh, I I think uh, they will will uh, will not be you know having. Uh, the commercial center as well. So it's very connected. And at the same time, uh, we should, uh, uh, when we speak about uh, the, the, uh, the impacts, either negative or positive, uh, I think uh, we need more time for that, especially uh, Ahmad Hafnawi spoke about uh, two things actually, uh, about the, uh, the effect on the short term, you know, and uh, on the long term. So, uh, if we if, uh, if we take the issue on the the short term, uh, definitely uh, it will uh, completely different from uh, the, the long term. Uh, if you, for instance, if we take the digging, actually, okay, so uh, it will affect the site on the short term, but not on the long term. You, you see, so it's I think it's a little bit uh, complicated, and uh, it needs more time. Uh, you know, to uh, analyze uh, such such impacts on the site, either negative or uh, or positive, and uh, you know the uh, to, to what ex extent actually it can affect. Because sometimes when we say, we say yeah, it's on the on the short time, uh, the short term, but it might uh, basically uh, damage the site. You know, <laughs> so this is uh, uh, really very, very, very serious. So sometimes we have to to look uh, on, um, you know, the uh, the overview. I I, I mean he, uh, here, not not only uh, 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 taking uh, the effects on the short term, and then we are uh, thinking about uh, the long term. So we might not reach the long term. If, uh, if we if we not take it seriously, so so this is this is the issue. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, I have to say I completely agree with you on that. I think because this exercise was designed as a scoping study, um, it was difficult for participants to really go deep into the matter of analyzing the quality of the impacts, let's say, about the details of, of each of the factors having a different kind of scale and different amount of extent and magnitude and scope. And um, most probably once you've listed out all the different factors that may have an impact on the site, it would be up to the subsequent impact assessment mm -hmm. process to actually look at it in more detail and be able to analyze what you've just been talking about in terms of different um, short-term, long-term, cumulative, you know, indirect impacts, so on and so forth. But I, that's that's a, a very important point. And I'm also really glad that the whole aspect of the connection of the two development projects has been pointed out um, at the beginning, because that's actually one of the most important factors, I think, because um, uh, that's, that's precisely why we need to look at the connection between the 
uh, interconnected uh, uh, developments that are being proposed within the sites and not to just assess them on an individual basis. Um, so I'm glad that comment slash question came out. Um, can, can I, I have, yeah. sure, can Nahed, I Nahed um, yes, please, go ahead. Um, uh, the point uh, about the manager square uh, that we, our group uh, considered it's positive, uh, it's just about the manager square. Uh, mm -hmm. that the, it's now used as a parking. Uh, so if there is another place to park, whether it's good or bad, so it will have a um, uh, positive impact on the manager square. Mm -hmm. So this is why we suppose it's positive. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Ahmad Hibnawi, I, I, I don't know if you wanted to speak. Yes, please. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ziad and all the group for the presentation. Um, I just, on behalf of like, the developer, I would like to summarize uh, all said from Muhammad, uh, Dr. Ahmed, and Nahid. Um, actually, <clears throat> when, when we talk about tra traffic, uh, we consider as well the, 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 the parking spaces. It's not just the the, the, uh, the movement, the, the car and vehicles movement. So all the lot and the surrounding area is being used as a parking. Even, um, even, <coughs> sorry, uh, even the square in front of, of of the church and besides the major square. First of all, second, the the the, the, the proposed location of the of the pro project is. Um, currently uh, is being used as a parking and it offers about 85 to 90 space of uh, parking spaces. So what we are, what we try to do in this uh, project or in this uh, concept is uh, to, to, to empty all squares and all lots surrounding the activity church and host all parking spaces available in one underground space. So this project will help us to completely empty the square, the major square and the nativity square and the Armenian lot from parking. This is number one. Uh, number two, it is, yes, um, I agree, it, uh, it is like indirectly linked to the tunnel, but if, if, uh, if the tunnel can be done, this will be fine. It will channel all, um, all cars moving in, in the area to the parking. But if it not, um, uh, this will not, uh, this won't affect the project. It will be good to channel all par uh, all cars to, to, to go to the to the parking we are proposing. But if not, the, the project can still be valid and can still still be uh, like offering uh, three hundred parking spaces. Um, yeah, that's it. I, ah, and in, in, in like in, in reference to what uh, Dr. Ahmed said about the uh, like categorization of the impacts, um, what we were discussing is we have two categories of impacts: the during construction impacts, including the, dig the digging methods and all the stuff, and the after construction. The after construction won't affect the the, the, the nativity church and the surrounding. Um, churches as during con the construction. This is why we said we have two kinds of um, um, impacts on the nativity church. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would just now like to close this Q&A session because I'm, I'm now kind of concerned that group two is getting too many hints <laughs> to <laughs> perhaps, uh, you know, modify their presentation last minute. <laughs> so without further ado, I will now hand over the floor to group two. And uh, again, the same rule applies. I'll, I'll chase you after 20 minutes, but judging from group one, you might actually not need that. <laughs> so yeah. thank no, you. No, we didn't do any modifications. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Just a moment I need to do, yeah. Yeah, this is group two. First of all, I would like to thank everyone from UNESCO for arranging for this uh, impact assessment training course for Sara, Scano, and Eugene for giving us this uh, fruitful and very impressive uh, training. And as well as for Mota for 
being part of this. Um, and also I would like to thank my group <laughs> for preparing this IA report, the impact assessment report for group two. Uh, fortunately that the group one presented a lot about Bethlehem, its location, its importance, and about the proposal of the, the first proposal of the project. So luckily we didn't do that. So at least you have an, an idea about it. So we started talking about the property. We're talking about the World Heritage Site, which is the birthplace of Jesus, the Church of Nativity, and uh, the pilgrimage route. First of all, uh, my colleague uh, Hannah will start the presentation, and then I will continue doing it. Hannah? Yes. Yeah, please. Uh... Good, afternoon. Good morning, everyone, and it was a pleasure uh, meeting all of you. Uh, talking about Bethlehem, that it is uh, the, the property uh, located uh, 10 kilometers uh, south of Jerusalem, and uh, of course, its significance of being uh, the place birth of Jesus. And it was uh, the first uh, church uh, built at uh, the fourth century uh, and uh, renovated after uh, the fire in the sixth uh, century. Uh, the st statement of uh, outstanding value, universal value, uh, is that it is the birthplace of, of Jesus, one of the most uh, historic and significant sites in the earth. Uh, okay, uh, next uh, slide, uh, Doctora. Uh, we identified the, uh, on a map, uh, the core uh, zone and the buffer zone, where uh, the core zone is uh, around the Nativity Church. Okay. Uh, the criteria under uh, which uh, inscription is proposed, uh, the birthplace of Bethlehem uh, uh, Church, uh, we had uh, two uh, categories, criteria, the outstanding example of the type of the building, the architectural and technological <coughs> symbol of uh, our landscape. Uh, and the direct or tangible association with the events of uh, uh, and living traditions and ideas and beliefs. Uh, starting with the uh, values, uh, we uh, the categories of these uh, values uh, are as follows. The religious and spiritual values, uh, since it is under, identified as the uh, birthplace of Jesus. Uh, it is one of the holiest uh, places on earth, <clears throat> and uh, it is one of the old. Uh, it is the oldest uh, Christian church in daily use, and uh, uh, the the story behind the uh, uh, pilgrimage route where uh, Saint uh, Mary and uh, the birth uh, place of Jesus, and the, these are the. Uh, attributes that supports these values. Uh, then we have the historical values. Uh, it is uh, it indicates uh, early stages of uh, history, uh, the Roman Empire uh, to Christianity, the uh, influence of uh, the Christianity period of the uh, Crusades. And uh, uh, the, one of the most important values to the, uh, to the Palestinians that is uh, an evidence uh, of long his, uh, history of occupation in this area. And, these, uh, and the attributes as follows. Then there are the urban uh, values. Uh, that uh, it is an example of uh, the early church uh, that uh, it has uh, a long route of uh, historical buildings and uh, archaeological sites around this route. Uh, then we have the uh, economic value that um, it is a source of income to Bethlehem uh, throughout uh, the souvenir shops and the pilgrimage routes. 
And in the end, uh, there are the uh, social and cultural values, uh, which uh, comes from the uh, traditions that happens at the church and the manager uh, square uh, and uh, several events along the years. And there are a number of cultural hubs and economic, uh, uh, economic values. Uh, here we uh, emphasized all of these attributes along um, both uh, core and uh, buffer zone. Uh, those are the ones on the uh, core zone. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the attributes along the uh, buffer zone where uh, we can find, uh, for example, uh, the uh, historical buildings along the route with the black dashed line and the, uh, the yellow and green uh, lines are the pilgrim pilgrimage routes. And uh, of course, uh, the, the core zone itself and the uh, outside the uh, the buffer zone, we have also uh, an attribute, which is uh, the Betzahur, the, the, the shepherd's field where uh, the story of birth uh, all started. And uh, now uh, back to you, uh, Zahra, floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Hanna. Uh, so now we, after knowing the site, its values, its attributes, and mapping them, uh, now we are talking about the management system analysis. Uh, so we started about uh, the analysis of the management system. So uh, who should be satisfied, uh, who should uh, have the management to be informed or to monitor the site. And um, we found that uh, to satisfy, we have the three domination of the Church of Nativity, the Ministry of Local Government and Bethlehem Governorate. And for the, to manage which, uh, who are the higher influence and the higher interest, uh, many um, uh, stakeholders or uh, who, should, uh, who should manage that the Site Management Committee and Steering Committee, the Ministry of Law of Antiquities and Tourism, Bethlehem Municipality, the Center for Cultural Heritage Preservation, the Presidential Committee, uh, the local community and the residents and shop owners along the Star Street. Uh, we should inform, uh, who should be informed are the NGOs, UNESCO, Office Ramallah, the expert in cultural heritage, the World Heritage Center, the Palestinian Contracting Union and Engineering Association, and for monitoring Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, the Union for uh, Handcraft Association, or the Tourism Organization, and Ecomos uh, Palestine. We found that on the two levels of the nativity complex and the pilgrimage route, we have management system like uh, the three dominations for the nativity complex, the presidential committee for restoration of the nativity church, Ministry of Tourism Antiquity, uh, for the site manager and CCHB, the Center for Cultural Heritage Preservation. On the level of the pilgrimage route, we have Bethlehem Municipality, Ministry of Local Government, Ministry of Tourism and Antiquity, and CCHP. The instruments that are used to, for the management for the nativity complex are the status quo, restoration program, the Palestinian cultural heritage law, the CMP, conservation and management plan, and World Heritage Conventions will by law for the preservation of architectural heritage in Bethlehem, which was found adopted in 2014. And for both the pilgrimage route and the buffer zone, we have the master plan, the CMP, World Heritage Conventions, the bylaws for the preservation uh, of architectural heritage in Bethlehem, the Palestinian Cultural Heritage 2018 traffic plan, impact assessment and environmental impact assessment, and as well for the uh, visual impact assessment. So with this instrument and management, so we started to look at the management system on the level of legal and customary framework and for the right holders and stakeholders. For the primary, we have the Palestinian law and the World Heritage Convention and the CMP. For the secondary, we have the Bethlehem Area Conservation and Management Plan, the Bethlehem Bylaw, the Illicit Convention for 1970, the Master Plan for Bethlehem and the Nativity Church status quo. And for sure, both of them, their role and input like will be on protecting, regulating, or conserving the cultural heritage um, in that area. And for a right holder and stakeholder, 
The primary uh, are the local communities, the presidential committee for the reservation of the Nativity Church, Ministry of Tourism and Antiquity, Ministry of Local Government, the municipality, the World Heritage Center, and the Holy Land Custody. For the secondary UNESCO, CCHP, Ministry of Education and Higher Education, because we have educational value, Ministry of Local Government and the Chamber of Commerce. For the primary, their role is management, monitoring, and planning for the area. And for the secondary, is supervision and uh, uh, for the planning process. Uh, the main scope should be the for what we suggested the uh, CMP, the Conservation and Management Plan, which is like established by MOTA and should be managed with the site manager, which is employed by MOTA. In addition to the other. Uh, managers who are already in site, as well as having the master plan, which is adapted by municipality and should be implemented and supervised by the municipality, as well as for UNESCO, uh, CCHP, and uh, the local community. Why impact assessment? Actually, we found we have, maybe we questioned, we questioned like we have a lot of uh, regulatory system, master plans, uh, conventions, but really why we need it as long we have all these legal framework. Uh, actually, uh, one thing we need to emphasize the importance of understanding the value of the site for all decision makers and stakeholders. We know it's important, but maybe we don't understand the, the real value of the site. And in most cases, the law inform uh, enforcement is not that much like evidence. So we need to make sure that all these legal instruments are fully enforced. and. Actually, while planning and studying, we know it's a must, like taking the 3D dimension while we are working on the 2D. But sometimes while doing the process, as long as it's not obligatory, we don't really think about it that much. So we need, when doing planning, management, any study, we need to consider the 3D dimension together with the 2D. And we need to protect the landscape because it's not only about the site and the buffer zone, but we are considering that the site is spread toward uh, and maybe a, a larger area. So we need also to think about how to protect the landscape. This is why we need the impact assessment study in this level. Actually, when we started talking about the proposed project, we uh, studied the last version of the proposed project, which we really do the impact assessment for it. Actually, this Manager Square Village project is adjacent to the Nativity Church proposed uh, on Armenian Patriarch land. It's a tourist commercial shops and parking. And it, uh, it, the claim of the developer is that to solve the, uh, the traffic plan and problem in the area. And uh, the built up area is expected to cover uh, approximately 16,000 square, seven levels of commercial entertainment, sorry, public spaces and parking. Uh, we have three levels underground for 300 cars proposed, and they claim that this project will mimic will, will mimics the old souks and the uh, alleyways of Bethlehem. Actually, this is the area of the proposed project, uh, explaining the, that this is really adjacent to the nativity chairs, the pilgrimage route, and the, complex, the convent complex and the gardens. And if we look at the project here, the 3D is very close to the manager, manager square and the nativity church and the whole complex. And this is our um, views from the project. And the most important we found is the section because we need how deep it will go beneath. And this is very, very sensitive and critical for the whole area and for the outstanding universal value. Actually, when we started discussing the action that will have uh, will cause an impact on the attribute within the property or uh, out within the buffer zone. Actually, we were thinking not only the attribute, but because what we was, was presented is only also the attribute. They are really uh, uh, presenting a value, a very important value, and also to keep in mind that the outstanding universal value should be like kept and preserved. So when we are talking about this impact. So we put in mind not only the attribute, but also the OUV. So uh, we found that uh, the most important action that might uh, cause an impact excavations, the number of the floors, the number of the shops, the form, the urban morphology, and the urban form of the project itself, the infrastructure, 
that needed to be done in order to implement this project, the construction, which is like under construction and preparing the site for the construction, the noise and the traffic. As we see from the matrix that we find that most of these actions impact, uh, have an impact on both the attributes uh, within the property, the core zone and the buffer zone. And this is very, shows us that how much the impact is high. So we mean, we summarize the impact by uh, demolishing a historic uh, building, which is on the land of the Armenian land, destroying the potential archeological remains, will cause a traffic problem, noise, visual impact and the setting, a social economic impact for the shops in the Star Street and in the old city as well. This is, will impact also the social level in the old town of Bethlehem because most of the tourists will go and visit only that uh, village. And so the, uh, the, the livability of the old city also will be impacted. Uh, the urban fabric will be invaded and we will have a deformation in the uh, urban morphology of the old town and the surrounding. Uh, so there will be architecture uh, like visual pollution for the architectural uh, fabric and will be violations for the bylaws and charters. So this is are the impacts of the actions in the previous matrix. Uh, so we, we like uh, evaluated all these impact and we uh, evaluated them. I'm sorry, but my PowerPoint colors was really bad. But we found that demolishing the historic building was a very high uh, impact, then excavation, then the traffic, the noise, then the visual impact, then uh, the socioeconomic impact uh, later, the urban fabric architecture and the bylaws. So this is a chart in color, it's not clear here, but yeah, this is showing us the hierarchy of the, um, the limit of the impact of each uh, factor. So actually we were thinking a lot actually about how to mitigate and to enhance the measures. To be honest, we didn't think about the project to be implemented. So we found that this project shouldn't be implemented and shouldn't be enhanced or mitigated. So the developers should uh, like we direct our the investment uh, to already existing shops along the pilgrimage route. They want to really to have uh, a shopping uh, area like a village. So why not to direct their investment into another an, an existing and important route? So instead of having this new building, and this construction will uh, put the World Heritage Site again in danger, and this is not good for Bethlehem. And the construction of a big scale project within close proximity to the church and nativity will negatively affect the site, its values and attributes. So the project shouldn't be implemented in any way or should be enhanced. So this was our conclusion uh, for uh, the project. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much, both groups. Super good timekeeping. Um, I, I can see that two groups have been working separately because you've actually been able to point out very different aspects um, through the whole scoping um, exercise. And uh, it, it's really quite impressive to see that, uh, that both groups managed to sort of cover all the important points, but also uh, developed into different directions, depending on the composition of the group as well. Um, I would just like to open up the floors for immediate questions and clarifications before turning to the resource people for their overall comments about the two group presentations. Anybody, do we have any comments or questions that you would like to ask? Or are you just hoping that the session ends really quickly? <laughs> no one, <huh? laughs> Zahra? Yeah. No, uh, but uh, I was uh, thinking to listen from Sarah and Escanio. Yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yes, no, <laughs> absolutely. No, uh, we are going to actually allow uh, the resource people all together to just give us, give, provide general comments about the two group presentations. But uh, if we don't any, have any immediate questions from the entire group, I'll then turn over to the resource people to provide their um, comments about the two presentations. And uh, uh, that. possible, like you said, uh, yeah, we've looked at the other presentation actually, and we we thought we we've seen like we have different approaches in doing the impact assessment. And my question is not about the exercise, but about reality. 
like mm. if uh, each people will have their uh, perspective their own perspective reflected in the work itself so this is we didn't like um not minimize i don't know the right word but i mean it will not like making something will be the focus of that group doing it and not the other and how this will impacting the whole process of impact assessment because really what I've seen the other's presentation I said okay this is we didn't like highlight it this is because we went directly to the proposed project to the impact but they we highlighted different issues like the, but yep. yeah Thank absolutely you. No, I think that's a that's a very valid comment. And perhaps because it only emerges out because we've had the two groups presenting on the same case, um, I think that would be valid for us to turn to the resource people to comment on while they're providing their overarching comments, because it's, it's a really important issue that we need to address. So with that, I'll just first of all, turn over to Sarah to provide her comments and uh, I don't have any preference in terms of order, but yeah. would you like to yeah. go first, Ascanio? Yeah, yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I just want to thank uh, both groups because it was very difficult to work uh, in this virtual environment and to reach to this uh, very powerful uh, presentation. Yes, because we, you really touch all the issues, all the, the topics that we, we try to describe during this course. So really, Congratulations for both groups. And yes, I just want to follow <laughs> Zahara comments. I think uh, uh, you're right. The, the, uh, there, <clears throat> there are two different approaches. I think that it depends mostly also uh, on the composition and the skills of the groups, because we have um, different, I think we have different, uh, more architects and more engineers or more people coming from Bethlehem, because I, uh, during the discussion, uh, I know that they, for example, in group one that I follow, uh, they, uh, during the previous exercise, we also discussed a lot about values, but the approach was different to what you presented in, uh, in group two. Uh, and it depends mostly uh, from, uh, from the skills and from the approach of the singular professionals that are approaching the, uh, the statement and evaluating the impacts. So um, this is one, Thing that we try to highlight during the course, and that is the multidisciplinary approach to the impact assessment, is that it could become uh, a very trigger in positive ways and in negative ways, because we have to balance, uh, really balance and uh, create an analytical process. So uh, I think this is very important that it, it should be highlighted in, during this, this uh, last presentation. This is uh, one topic or dealing with the impact assessment also means dealing with also people and professional uh, approaches. So uh, you should also always have to balance these approaches uh, in, uh, and demonstrate your uh, conclusion. It, this is my main comment. comment. Mm. Excellent. Ascanio, if you have any other comments uh, regarding the two group presentations, please go ahead. Um, I'll just go around. I'll, I'll go in the order of Ascanio, Giovanni, Mohammed, and Sarah, if that's okay. I'll just reverse, let's just do a little bit of a mix and match. <laughs> and then I'll go last. Are you finished, scan you? Oh, okay. Okay, uh, then uh, can I ask Giovanni or Mohammed if you would like to comment on the overall group work? You're politely offering the other one to go first. <laughs> Well, I will, uh, I will summarize uh, mine and uh, Giovanni's um, uh, point of views on that, sure. if you may. Uh, first of all, we're, we're really so happy that we reached this level of, uh, of work within this short time. And uh, we know the difficulties of working virtually. Um, I would like also to thank um, uh, uh, those of the participants who know Bethlehem very well, because the load of work was more um, uh, put on their shoulders than others. They, they managed to help their other colleagues in uh, ex explaining to them uh, the values of the site and uh, identifying probably also some of the impacts uh, of the uh, development project. I would like also to, uh, to thank uh, Ahmed Hefnawi and uh, uh, his uh, colleague for um, uh, presenting the project. Uh, and I could see that uh, his presence in the group number one was uh, probably enlightening for the other group to consider other points of views. And if Sarah um, remembers in the very early discussions we have with Scanio, uh, 
highlighting the importance of having the, the other point of view of the project, the ones who actually propose it, uh, the ones who, uh, who see its values. Um, so this was very important. And I think that uh, uh, not having that point of view, or at least the power of pushing in the other group was completely uh, giving them the liberty to uh, completely cancel it. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the, um, referring to Zahra's question on reality. On reality, we will face the two point of views. We will face the two pressures. So it would be uh, important to uh, focus more and to uh, be as much as possible or be the most extent possible objective, not subjective, um, uh, especially in the um, uh, severity ladder, this one which you identify the impacts and you need really to, uh, to list your reasons uh, uh, to um, uh, support your uh, selection. Um, I would just like to say something also about the second, uh, the second group. Um, uh, we, we see that uh, there are uh, really complementing ideas in the two presentations. Uh, the two group was, uh, the, uh, group number two was um, uh, uh, giving, um, uh, uh, I would say, other ideas concerning the socioeconomic uh, or uh, uh, the um, socioeconomic situation or the um, uh, point of view of the residents, uh, especially those who know Bethlehem very well, um, there was this project called Padico uh, project, which is uh, now uh, um, a bus station and also a commercial center that was uh, built outside, just outside the old town. And it, um, uh, it was uh, really raising lots of concerns uh, uh, at a, sp a specific period of time uh, because uh, it managed to alter the uh, tourism and the uh, people's circulation inside the old town. Uh, having identifying this kind of values and uh, this kind of impacts uh, is very important. I would really, uh, if, if time of course allows, uh, advise the group number one also to look at these aspects uh, deeply. Uh, they, they, uh, they are very important in identifying how much or how you will be dealing with the, with the, with the project and its impact. Um, uh, apart from this, actually, we're, we're happy to see them all interacting. And uh, uh, I think that also the, the, um, uh, the presentations uh, were very clear uh, uh, in terms of uh, presenting the importance of uh, identifying the attributes because they will be, everything will be measured, measured against these attributes and values. Uh, the management system, uh, we see that it's, it's, uh, the, the, the participants all managed to highlight the um, uh, elements of the management system and uh, how it should work and how it works actually on the ground. Um, so uh, basically the, the elements are there and uh, we are happy with this result. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, then I'll turn to Sarah for her comments. Please. Okay, I've, I've, I made lots of notes. <laughs> uh, you're at risk of me talking too much with my enthusiasm. Um, no, first of all, I have to uh, congratulate both groups because I think this is possibly the most challenging uh, training we've done in this Zoom environment to not be able to meet you in person and not have conversations outside of the presentation and not visit the site together is terrible. <laughs> We're all doing our best in 2020. We found it very challenging to be able to communicate well with you. So to find that you have made the most of what we've offered despite uh, it not being ideal situations and see that you've, uh, fortunately, you've, <laughs> you seem to have understood <laughs> what we were trying to say. So it's also a great relief to see the quality of your work um, means that it was very uh, it was useful to do this experiment on Zoom. It's not ideal, but it was better than nothing. And I hope you also uh, feel the same way that we've at least um, been able to take these first steps together. So congratulations. I think um, it has only been in this last couple of days that perhaps you've, by doing this, this final exercise makes us all understand how complex impact assessment can be. I know that a lot of you have been very frustrated about timing and we need to discuss more. 
And that itself is a very good sign. Your frustration is a great sign that you've understood how complex the heritage is, how complex it is to discuss society today, how we change and develop, and how we do that whilst protecting the most important places that we have in the world. So I think also your frustrations are a very good sign that you've understood that these are very big issues and big challenges for everyone that we need to take seriously. So that was a, um, a general comment. And I think as well that ties into, uh, if you take home one uh, further message from us, is that these discussions, which are very complex and, and do have many points of view, that is exactly why the methodology of impact assessment can be so useful to you. I know you're all working in very complex, different scenarios, not just Bethlehem. All of you come from different heritage places, different towns. The methodology is not just a methodology to make you do things the way we think is useful with templates. It's a process that is transparent so that everybody can come, when they come with assumptions, you understand what they are and you can communicate. And I think the importance of doing the process together it's not the end report in a sense doesn't interest me very much it's the process of bringing all the different people together and having those discussions which you started to today so that's um if you go away with this understanding that the, the taking steps together and being transparent in your thinking then you can't i think the heritage sector has been very bad in the past just saying this is a very important place we can't change anything and it doesn't get us very far and then we get frustrated urban planners who don't understand and just give permission anyway <laughs> the minute we're better at explaining ourselves why the place is important why the project would affect a place for better or for worse we have more intelligent conversations and i think that's at the heart of what we can offer um but to give some more specific feedback on the two groups I really liked group one who noted that there were actually two aspects to this project, the parking project and the shopping project. That's a really helpful approach that you might find if, if this was real life. To divide the two and understand what were the what were the objectives of both elements, one to solve a parking issue, one to offer kind of commercial regeneration, and to decide separately those uh, if they're useful, not useful. And if they are useful, if they do offer positive impacts, how we might do it in the best possible way. But dividing those two was uh, quite a useful intellectual step. Um, both groups actually went beyond OUV and had a desire to include other values, which I really liked. Obviously, if the World Heritage Committee is asking for something, we look at OUV. But the minute that you start to see that actually Bethlehem, like everywhere, is much more complex, it's really important to note those other values because I saw both of you saw that the biggest impacts were actually on the shops that would potentially be demolished. So these are not even attributes of the World Heritage property that you all express great concern, both groups. And I think that's very interesting as well. The attention we give to World Heritage can also have positive impacts on other heritage nearby as we start to see the connections that World Heritage isn't in isolation. There are many other things around it that need considering. So that came out of both presentations and was very useful. Um, I did a, a final comment in group, group one. I, I very much like to see that you'd noted the Armenian convent was much more likely to be impacted. And so it's, again, I thought it was nice to see that by understanding specific attributes, we could talk about elements of the world heritage property that might need more attention. So if one was to do this um, project in real life, we might decide that there would need to be mitigation for that specific attribute. And it might take you in a, a very interesting direction to resolve any problems that were arising. Uh, the second group, who I spent much more time with, so um, I actually, I, I half my comments I made was because I was very happy with the discussions behind the scenes. There was a great deal of attention to understanding the values and attributes, which um, is really important. Some Occasionally I do technical reviews for ICOMOS of impact reports that have been sent to the committee and they want someone to review them. All too often, there is a failure to really understand the World Heritage property. It's extraordinary, or at least 
I, I'm sure the author knows very a lot, but fails to put that in the report. So the attention that went into really um, trying to get into the understanding of the property was really important, particularly because we didn't have our Bethlehem expert. So it was really important that that uh, took a lot of priority. And also there was a big discussion about the stakeholders and how they might they were divided how one might work with them. So I think that again was is a really strong component in real life. And finally, I don't want to talk too much. Um, I would therefore say that the last issue which was, was relevant to both groups is this question of timing. Everybody keeps saying there's not enough time. <laughs> we would need more time. And I think it's just worth mentioning that there was one aspect which we didn't really cover in detail so much in this course. We mentioned it in our presentation, but didn't put emphasis on it because we didn't ask you to do it. And that is actually the question of really measuring the impacts, that kind of final step. In the presentations you've done today, I would say you've gone to the point of identifying lots of the impacts and noting which ones were more significant but we must remember this exercise is very much it would serve as a briefing for a team who would then do the full assessment and it wouldn't take days it would take months so your frustration about timing is valid because these things take months and the one thing that takes a lot of time is actually going out and measuring the impact it's not enough again it's it's what i was trying to say earlier it's not enough for the heritage person to say this isn't good we need to be able to demonstrate why and how. So there's a whole range of things. For those who start to do this work, you know, you must, um, we've tried to share some resources already, but if you ever come across difficulties, we can share more examples. It's to actually measuring what will happen. So in these cases, it might be, uh, some people were talking about the visual impacts. It might be doing renderings to show how that would actually look in real life, not just um, the beautiful ones, but the view from the church, if that changed anything, or it might be that you're the urban planning people and you want to do mapping of uh, traffic routes through the town or foot traffic. How are the pilgrims going to move along the pilgrimage route and what does it change for them? It, it might be a social economic study. Very often the social impact, um, we don't talk about them, but there's a lot you can do to demonstrate how things will change. And it's, I think that's very important to note. This is uh, supposed to be a process that leads us to identifying evidence and then making conclusions on the evidence so that we stop. Um, what often happens is one group saying yes and one group saying no. And us never really being able to take the discussion forward. The minute we use this sort of process and you add in the element I've just mentioned, which obviously impossible for us to, to ask you to do in six days, um, that will reinforce your discussion and in actual fact you might find yourself changing your minds in the process of getting the evidence and analysing it you might change position so it's um, I would just recommend that that's something that we we didn't manage to really communicate well in our presentations but there's an awful lot of um, other material out there for specific ways you might want to move forward so what we did today was fantastic as a scoping report but there is so much more for those of you who are uh, now enthusiastic and want more. So uh, I would just encourage you to um, keep going because it was great what we've done and uh, much more fun to be had in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, as the last person to go, <laughs> and I haven't actually accompanied you all the way throughout the course, so I might just make um, presumptive comments as well. But uh, based on the two presentations, I was very, very impressed with the amount of work that you've put into it. And in fact, for me, having absolutely no prior knowledge about Bethlehem and uh, the entire region, uh, it was very easy for me to actually understand the overall approach and how you actually got to your conclusions, which is, which is a really, really important factor, especially in terms of making a clear presentation, because you need to understand that you're dealing with people in the case of impact assessments who are not heritage people. And the fact that you could actually sync, synthesize all the different debates, discussions and findings of your work and be able to 
deliver that and present that in such a clear way is already very, very um, excellent work that, that I've seen um, throughout the whole two presentations. I've also made lots of notes, so let me just go through them. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I actually wanted to commend um, both groups for having a really good try at analyzing the governance of the management system, because you didn't just remain at identifying the stakeholders, but you really tried to go in and understand the relationships between them. And especially group one, where you made that diagram about, it's not just the individual institutions or the organizations, but how they come together to make the decision. Uh, the fact that you identified the different working mechanisms as well, um, that really impressed me. I think uh, based on that, it would then also be possible to understand, okay, at what point should uh, relevant decisions should be made um, for future impact assessments and how should you be able to react and respond to such uh, different challenges coming up in the future. So I think that the understanding of the governance of the entire site has been a very useful exercise that will serve really well, not just for this instance, but for any future um, possibilities coming up. Um, one of the things that I wanted to raise perhaps perhaps for both groups actually, because you started off on the premise of the boundary clarifications and the values and attributes contained within. I, I just thought that it might have been really useful to know whether or not you considered that the current boundaries of the site was actually sufficient or not, because uh, you know there might have been other attributes that you considered important that should have been considered. So maybe that's also one thing that could be considered in the future. But I also wanted to sort of um, throw out a question there on the on the whole number of the 300 cars, <laughs> the parking space. I was wondering what was the basis of considering that 300 would be the optimal number uh, to be able to digest all the different traffic uh, pressures that were present in the area. And that if indeed that was an optimal number to, to be able to absorb all the existing traffic pressure, um, if there was a new commercial building to be established, that would actually attract more people coming in into Manger Square. So there would be an increased uh, amount of people coming in. And then would that number still hold valid? Uh, that I, th I think there's that issue of, of sort of trusting the data, of wondering whether 300 is enough or indeed if it would have been enough to have 100 parking spaces. Not to not to go into too much detail, but just um, the aspect of questioning the validity of the data is something that we always need to keep in mind. I was also thinking that perhaps um, there could have been, I know that this was against this particular project that was already proposed as a commercial development to be established within the Manger Square, but in, in terms of addressing the parking issue or the, or the increased traffic pressures, uh, there could have been other solutions to be to have been um, explored, let's say. So in the mitigation and sort of uh, suggesting alternative options, I think it's always good to also think out of the box and think sort of apart from the already proposed projects. Many historic centers that are adopting pedestrian approach only, um, you know, measures are also considerable, you know, where you only get to do the mandatory parking of, you know, loading and unloading or only those who are resident or owners of shops can have like minimal parking space. And just to sort of divert the traffic pressures over and above without actually making a parking lot to attract more you know uh, cars to actually approach that area so um just to just to have always that churning of thoughts that could address different um options from the outset is also would also be helpful i think um in particular for group two i was very impressed with the aspect that you identified the interconnections of the attributes because it's one thing to actually be able to identify all the different attributes individually and then try to measure the impacts on them as, as one by one. And then, and group one did that very beautifully. And then um, there's a, the other aspect of sort of combining them all together and gelling them. And uh, that comes with the social cultural values and the associative values that you've managed to uh, bring out, out and understand that this is the pilgrimage route and that the function and the values of the manger square at the current day 
um, you know, the symbolic meaning that it has for that for that for that city environment, I think, was a really strong point that uh, you've raised. Um, I think uh, more emphasis on the pilgrimage route aspect and making sure that there's like that kind of pedestrian connection between the different attributes uh, could be explored more on those grounds. And then um, overall, I think um, it was really good to see the buildup of the different group work, the individual group works all coming together at the end to be able to come to the final conclusion. And I could see that both groups actually used two different ways of going about, you know, two, using different tools, you know, different templates. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, I don't think there is an absolute right or wrong in terms of using templates, as long as you find the right one that could demonstrate objectively as possible the current situation and the analysis process, I think that's uh, absolutely fine in terms of um, using whatever tool that comes more handy. And uh, and it's just really good to see that uh, people have been trying to get around using these tools and uh, make it into your own so that it can be helpful for the future. Um, in the overall, uh, combination of the two groups. I perhaps just as closing comments, I just wanted to emphasize what Sarah had said about I impact assessment being just a process measure. It's it's a way of working. You know, it's it's you know uh, just making sure that you have a stream of process of thinking before we are acting, and that that thinking process is actually shared and uh, it's made as objective as possible so that we can all contribute to it and, uh, and, and, and actually arrive at the most optimal solution. The case study was a distinct cultural site in an urban area. So obviously uh, there wasn't a lot of natural elements to be considered in the process of it. But I think it's important to note that for many different other cases, there will be also natural environment issues that will need to be uh, considered. So please just keep that in the back of your heads for any future uh, uh, possibilities. And that uh, I just wanted to close by saying that heritage is a constantly evolving sector. It's ever expanding, it's, it's continuously developing and developments are happening in all corners of surrounding the heritage. So we also need to play our part of keeping up with these kind of developments. And I think it's really important that uh, all of us are continuously striving to get better at what we're doing and explaining to others why we're doing this. And uh, the only way to go about it is through these capacity building um, activities and, and our coming together to, to make ourselves work better. So um, all in all, I would really like to thank all of you for um, being here and uh, taking part in this capacity building activity. And I hope that we can continue on more often in these kind of work. Um, with that, I think we can hand over, I, I can hand over to Mohammed for the closing session of the of this uh, final session of the course. That's okay. Mohammed. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, thank you really very much for um, uh, moderating this session and for all for your feedback as well. Uh, I think they are all um, pertinent and I'm sure they'll be taken into account uh, in uh, all the future thinkings of the, uh, of the participants and any involvement in such uh, uh, exercises. Um, I see that Dr. Ahmed is raising his hand. Uh, please, Dr. Ahmed, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Muhammad, and uh, thank you for all of you, especially our international experts here, uh, Scania, Sarah, or Jean. Thank you very much, and thank you for all participants, and for you, Muhammad, and Gio Giovanni, and all for uh, such impressive, actually, uh, uh, course. Uh, really, as uh, I said uh, at the beginning, we lack of such experience, but now I trust we have now, I can say, uh, experts, uh, local experts, we, uh, they can do such, uh, such work. And as Sarah said, it's uh, a way of, of working, it's a process. 
I think yeah, it is um, a good uh, way of uh, working. I just uh, want uh, to confirm something which is really very important because uh, as as we saw, we have you know the, the two groups. Okay, they used uh, two approach uh, approaches actually, uh, uh, and especially uh, group one. Since we we have the developer with us, okay, it was an advantage actually for for the the, the group one. Uh, I I just would like here to uh, highlight a uh, uh, very important thing uh, thing uh, actually it's very important uh, you know to have an independent body to undertake such uh, uh, such let's say, let's say impact assessment uh, which is really important because we experienced uh, this this issue in our group uh, thank uh, my really uh, uh, thanks to to Ahmed Hafnawi for for his uh, uh, for his uh, really uh, interventions for his feedback to us. But the 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 question here uh, always uh, when when uh, you know that the develop the developer should be included in the process which is really really important and how you know this is very important therefore i would like to confirm that uh, if we uh, want to uh, uh, if we are going to have a, an objective let's say uh, uh, impact assessment we should have uh, independent body or independent entity who is going to conduct uh, such uh, such study because it's it's really very very important and we uh, we touched that in our in our groups or in, especially in the in group uh, group one but it's very important as well to consult you know the developer the developer but the question when and how you know so this is this is the issue so just I uh, I uh, I wanted to to raise this this issue. Uh, for, for who is going, uh, you know, to conduct such studies in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, I see Marwa as well uh, raising her hand. Please, Marwa. Uh, really, thank you all for uh, this great. Uh, indeed, we already have uh, the new cultural law, uh, 2018. Uh, I know it contains reference to heritage and environmental impact assessment. We need to work more with UNESCO, Ramallah office, and uh, other entities to prepare a bylaw or a guideline for a strategic, uh, a strategic uh, impact assessment by uh, our uh, future developments. Uh, it's a kind of recommendation more than a question. Thank you. Yeah. I think this is very important. Uh, we know that uh, uh, this is what we are presenting in this training is in the context of uh, world heritage, but we know that the uh, local legislations, national legislations speak about uh, doing this uh, impact assessments um, in, for any development project, mainly in the cultural landscape, whether it is world heritage or not. So yes, we, uh, we emphasize on the need to develop um, uh, some guidelines or uh, some national policies on how to do this apart from uh, uh, the, like the World Heritage context. Um, and we will continue with each other, I'm sure, on that. Uh, Ahmed Hifnawi, uh, please, Ahmed, the floor is yours. Uh, first of all, I would like, on behalf of uh, BDF, Bethlehem Development Foundation and CCC. Uh, I would like to thank UNESCO Ramallah for, um, and the team, all of you, everyone, uh, for inviting us to participate in this um, uh, very useful training. Um, secondly, um, I want to clarify that uh, it's our duty since we are heavily involved in uh, developing uh, Bethlehem and uh, many other areas in uh, Palestine uh, for the last 
25 years. Um, it's our duty to, to, to plan and to, to, to consider the needs of uh, the locals and uh, uh, set up um, 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 a long-term development initiative um, um, a vision for Palestine because we believe it's our duty to to see Palestine in the coming um, 20 and 30 years. Um, uh, this stems from um, uh, being uh, one of the leading construction companies in uh, the Middle East, as CCC, uh, and it is a Palestinian company, <clears throat> even it's an international. Uh, but we believe that uh, uh, we have to pay our uh, responsibility to Palestine and to continue. Uh, developing projects and thinking of projects that will serve uh, the, the Palestinians uh, all over West Bank and uh, Gaza Strip. Um, I'm, um, I'm happy also and, um, to inform you that um, for future use, maybe in case uh, UNESCO model decides to organize another workshop or another training, a uh, similar initiative for uh, developing Bethlehem. We have uh, uh, another one for Gaza Strip. There is uh, archaeological sites in Gaza, you know that. Uh, and there are actually plenty of archaeological sites in Gaza. Um, we face this issue during planning for uh, uh, the Connected Gaza Initiative, what we call Connected Gaza Initiative. Uh, so for future use, we, you can uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We are available to work with you uh, for the common benefit of uh, the experts of, uh, of uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, the local uh, authorities. Um, and yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you all for uh, inviting us again. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I'm sure we'll continue uh, coordinating um, on many levels. Uh, thank you for your effort and time. Uh, I see. Uh, okay, Mahmoud. Uh, Mahmoud Balawi from Gaza. Please, Mahmoud. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would, I would like to thank UNESCO uh, Office in Ramallah for uh, organizing this uh, a very interested uh, course. I hope uh, um, this. Uh, this uh, means and the uh, modifications which we uh, uh, have in this course will, uh, will help us in uh, our work uh, here in Gaza. And I would like to see that uh, uh, after, uh, before uh, two years, uh, before two days, uh, ISIS was added uh, uh, Anthedon uh, archaeological site here in, here in Gaza uh, to, her tent uh, to its tentative, uh, tentative list. And uh, you know well, uh, this uh, site was added in the tentative list of UNESCO since um, I think uh, 20, 20, 20 years ago. Uh, we hope, uh, we hope uh, that the efforts of UNESCO um, in, the, in the coming years uh, will be better uh, to help this site for, uh, uh, for, its, um, uh, for its situation here in Gaza. And we, uh, we are uh, ready for any uh, work uh, in this in this field. Uh, many thanks uh, to you and uh, your team, Muhammad, uh, uh, for uh, the organizing of this course. And I hope you will uh, see you uh, soon here in Gaza. Thank you, Mahmoud. Thank you. Inshallah, we'll be soon uh, after this COVID-19. Uh, I don't know if it, if, if it will end hopefully soon, we'll be able to visit you soon, inshallah. And uh, uh, mentioning the Antidon port, um, yes, we, uh, uh, we um, uh, I would say we have something for St. Hilaria, for um, uh, Antidon port. Uh, we know its value and we know also the challenges that the site is facing. Uh, so I hope that we'll be soon able with the, in coordination with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities to do some interventions there. Um, I saw that Zahra was raising her hand, but I don't know if she, she disappears from time to time from the screen. I did, maybe, did... yeah, one, very quick, but maybe I comment on what Ahmad suggested or proposed, like to include the contractor or the developers within the team of the impact assessment. 
and for me it's very challenging and I don't think it's a proper way to do the impact assessment if we want to do it in an objective way uh, because a developer I mean in any way wants his project to be implemented I don't think he will think about the project will be like not constructed or minimized or changed uh, so I believe maybe we shouldn't include their design like to ask them for often about their proposal, the details, the construction drawings and all this, but not being part of the impact assessment as really to prepare for it. This is just a short comment. Thank you. Thank you, Zahra. Uh, any uh, other comment? Yes, Eugene, please. Hi, I just wanted to add on to that um, because it's actually one of the key issues that are being raised in the whole world of impact assessments, being able to be objective about the results because in many cases, the impact assessment itself is being funded by the developer itself. So um, there is always that issue of not being entirely sure of whether the impact assessment would have been conducted objectively, um, you know, uh, as having it being paid by by the development proponents, so uh, it's it becomes a tricky issue, and uh, in many cases there are different solutions to go about it. Uh, but I think it's really important just to highlight that the impact assessment itself, the process itself, has to be driven as an independent uh, uh, process where they continuously collaborate with different entities and uh, involve them at different stages of the entirety of the process. But then in the sense of actually making the final analysis and assessing the impacts themselves, they do need to maintain that measure of integrity and to be able to uh, answer to the different conclusions that they have reached with scientific data as much as possible. So um, in many different instances, there will be the developers involved at different stages of the impact assessment, especially for the collection of the data and also understanding the development proposal. Um, and and that that's absolutely crucial, I think. But then in terms of coming to the conclusion of the assessment itself and then making sure that the entirety of the report is considered to be integral and, and has that level of, of uh, objectivity is also very, very crucial to keep in mind when uh, future impact assessments are undertaken. Just wanted to add that. Uh, thank you, uh, Eugene, for this. Um, anyone would like to add something? As we are um, approaching the um, end of our last uh, day and last sessions, if there are no yeah, other hi. comments, hi. it's not a comment. Ah, it's Tamara. Hi, how are you? Uh, I want to uh, thank you all for all the uh, excellent course. It was uh, not easy to uh, participate in the presentation due to my my lack of knowledge of the we applied when working on uh, inshallah. Thank you all. Thank you, Tamara. Though I think that the line was disconnecting for some time. I don't know if you would like to repeat. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, just want to thank you for this uh, uh, excellent course. Uh, uh, and I want to say that uh, it was not easy to, ma to me to uh, particip participate in the presentation due to my lack of knowledge of the details of the uh, sites Bethlehem, but uh, I think uh, 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 this uh, session will be applied uh, when uh, working on the Jericho file, uh, inshallah. And thank you all. Inshallah, thank you, Tamara. Uh, of course, we had other um, colleagues who managed to uh, um, fill in, in the gap of not knowing the site. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you for everyone. I have two uh, things to mention if there are no other feedback, comments, questions. Zahra, really? Can you? So? Uh, Zahra, you would like to say something? 
No, just because like we worked with many people we didn't see before and because most of us don't open the camera. So we were all suggesting that after COVID-19 is over that to meet in person. I mean, this is UNESCO's role. This is for a joke, huh? <laughs> we, can meet now, we can meet now by opening all our cameras, if you may. No, in person, Muhammad, in person, not via okay. camera. This is the first step. <laughs> You may, uh, we can open our cameras. This is actually one of the things I wanted, wanted to, uh, to say um, is that we can take a group photo. Uh, we cannot do that in person. We can do that virtual as well. So if you may, I don't know if that, if your situation allows, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can ask you to open this, um, uh, this, uh, your videos. And um, uh, awaiting you to do that, if you may, uh, I would like to mention that we, uh, We'll be sending you um, uh, an evaluation form for this training uh, to just um, uh, try to uh, listen to your views, uh, knowing that this was an exceptional situation where we have to do uh, such a training uh, uh, virtually. Uh, by the way, it was planned last year uh, and it was planned in person, uh, and it was we were right, like trying to prepare to have it uh, with field visits. But unfortunately, the situation did not allow. So we would like to listen to your views on that and uh, uh, your expectations, and of course, your uh, future plans to follow up on this uh, training. Um, that will be um, shared with you soon, and we hope that uh, we will get it also um, uh, um, afterwards. I will follow up uh, with you on that. Um, also, uh, awaiting you to uh, switch on your cameras, uh, uh, I'm going to give the floor back to uh, Giovanni. You started this uh, training, and uh, the floor is yours now to close it, if you may. Thank, Thank you. you. Reopen my mic from the side. Um, I wanted just to, to briefly uh, conclude this training by saying that this is not an ending point. Uh, it's just a starting one. I promised Sarah, Ascanio, and Eugene that we will invite them here. So this, prom this promise is maintained, of course. And by that time, I hope we will all be able to, to join in the meeting uh, room all together to enjoy also the uh, interpersonal skills among us, uh, be it in a working group or in a, in a larger group session, uh, in plenary whatsoever, but at least to be together again after this very challenging period. Um, I wanted to tell you that this has been um, an extremely uh, interesting training experience for all of us at UNESCO uh, by discussing with the facilitators with Eugene as well. I mean, uh, it's been um, hard. Uh, we try to do our best to adjust things to the current circumstances. I know it's been difficult from time to time in terms of internet connections, in terms of accessibility to the documents, but uh, at the end of the day, I hope it will really benefit your daily work. Um, we have some work in progress in different uh, sites in Palestine, but also Coming back to what uh, Ahmed was saying, and even Mahmoud, I think, uh, we will be working in Gaza. And this is precisely the right timing to do this training, because that will be needed. And we are insisting with our partners, with our counterparts at the national level, uh, on the importance, also with donors, of course, on the importance of having this impact assessment done from the beginning. We will insist, we count on all of you. You have now, I hope, better understanding and better skills to also uh, work with us in advocating the importance of this uh, assessment, which is really, really essential. I think I will stop there, but not closing before thanking really uh, Sarah Ascanio, and Eugene for their patience, for their support all throughout these three weeks. It's been a long one, but I hope that you didn't feel overwhelmed. The fact that we did it split in three weeks, I, I hope it worked. It helped all of us to, 
to be and to absorb concepts and to, to be all the time ready with full of energies. And uh, with that said, I wanted to thank also my staff here that you know very well by now. And uh, this is just a, a goodbye, huh? I would say. It's just the first step of a long process and you can count on UNESCO Ramallah office commitment to go ahead and to further strengthen the capacities of Palestinian uh, professionals. And uh, uh, I look particularly also to, to Ahmed uh, because I know we've been working on world heritage and nominations and properties and it's very hard and uh, oh, we will continue our fruitful cooperation and show and with all of you it will be a pleasure one day to meet you all in person from my uh, personal point of view so thank you again to you all and i think we are ready now we have a, a, a good amount of camera yes. on <laughs> uh, one thing i want to mention uh, i would like just to remind you all please uh, to um uh, download the materials on the shared folder. Uh, it will stay for some time. Uh, I think the expiry will not stay forever. So please um, um, uh, download the materials. And I would like also to ask you, if you may, you can send us your presentations so we can upload them uh, for everyone to see. Uh, and I would like to remind also Mota that uh, the first presentation delivered by Shaima in the very first sessions was not uploaded. So uh, if you may share all of those materials with us, we'll put them there so that everybody ha can have access uh, to this uh, very important resource documents. Thank you again, and let's take this photo. Uh, everyone is ready? Uh, I see people coming and leaving. Uh, everyone <laughs> is ready to take this photo? <laughs> You're, you're coming and disappearing. <laughs> Would you like to join? We're waiting for you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Tamara. Hi, Tamara. Hi. Think okay. It's okay? Thank you, then. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone. Keep in touch. You know where and how to find us. So, yeah. Always ready. Shukran, shukran, jazeela. Shukran, Dr. Ahmed. Afwan, shukran, Dr. Jamian. Thanks to all. Thanks to all. And Sarah, Scano, Jean, really. Welcome to Palestine after uh, uh, the, this corona. So really, we are looking forward to, uh, to have you in person here in Palestine. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, UNESCO uh, of, uh, Office in Ramallah, my colleagues and all. Really, we are, we are very proud with you. So we, we, ha we, we really trust you, and uh, we are going to have a lot of work with you for such impact assessments. Thank you very much. Great. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.